Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve Pacific Atlantic water flow. So this is another problem from the blind 75 list and that's why I'm doing it today. The link to this spreadsheet will be in the description again. And so we will be able to fill in one more graph problem today from that blind 75 list. We're nearly done with that list now. At least most of the important problems on this list. I think there are some binary questions that I haven't really done and I might not do these because I feel like binary questions rarely come up in interviews. But for this problem, so the text is a little small, so let's focus more on the picture. So we're given a two-dimensional grid of values, and so each value represents a height. So this has a height of four, this has a height of five, et cetera, et cetera. We are claiming that the top border of our grid, everything you know, right above our grid, and everything to the left of the grid is going to be called the Pacific Ocean. And everything to the right of the grid and everything below the grid is going to be the Atlantic Ocean. So for any particular cell, we want to know can this cell reach the Pacific Ocean and can it reach the Atlantic Ocean? If it can, then we are going to include this position in the result. If it cannot reach the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, then we don't include it in the result. So how do we know if this cell can reach the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean? Because clearly there's a path, you know, straight to it. Well, there's one condition. We want to know if water from this cell can flow to the Pacific and to the Atlantic, and water can only flow from the perspective of a cell to an adjacent cell that has a value that is lower than the original cell or equal to the cell. And it can only flow in four directions, straight above, to the left, to the right, and below. That's pretty straightforward. Usually you can't go diagonally in these types of graph problems. And so in this case, for this five, we see that the above neighbor three is less than five, this is less than five, this is less than five, and this is less than five. So clearly five can go to all of its neighbors. Now let's take a look at the three. Okay, three has a neighbor one. One is less than three, so it can definitely flow in that direction. And now see this one is bordering the Atlantic Ocean. So clearly that means five is able to reach the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's look left, it can reach four, and four can definitely reach two because two is less than or equal to four. So from this perspective, we can also now reach the Pacific Ocean. So water from this position can flow to the Pacific and it can flow to the Atlantic. So this position is going to be included in our result. So a brute force and naive way to solve this problem is to simply go to every single position, do some kind of graph traversal, DFS or BFS would probably work, and doing that search check from a cell, can we reach the top and left border, and can we reach the right and bottom border, and if we can, then we're gonna add this cell to the solution set. If we can't, then we don't add it, right? So if we're doing a DFS or BFS on every single position, starting at every single position in the grid, we're gonna get a time complexity of basically the size of the grid. Let's say that's that's N times M, which is you know the dimensions of the grid. And if we do that from every single starting point, we're gonna get N by M squared as the big O time complexity. And you might think, well, since we're doing this recursively, we're probably doing a lot of repeated work, right? So for example, if I'm starting at three, right, doing a DFS from here, I'm gonna go to its neighbors and then do DFS from here, 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 and here. And maybe, you know, by doing that, I can cut out the repeated work, right? And so I won't, and so we won't have to, you know, restart a DFS for every single position in the entire grid. And you might think that that will work, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm not going to go through the details of why. And somebody in the comments can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there is a clever way to get that to work, but I, I tried to do it myself and I was not able to. So I don't know if it's actually possible to do it that way. There's a different clever way to solve this problem. How about rather than us going through every single cell and checking if this cell can reach Pacific and reach Atlantic, how about we go th start from the Pacific Ocean, right? And let's find every 
cell that borders the Pacific Ocean. Clearly, everything in the first row borders the Pacific Ocean, right? That means everything in this cell can reach the Pacific Ocean, and everything in the left column can also reach the Pacific Ocean. And starting from each of these nodes, what we're going to do is now find what are all the other nodes that can also reach the Pacific Ocean, right? So at the end, we would have, you know, some kind of set. Maybe, you know, it looks something like this, right? Or whatever. And then we know, okay, these are all, all the ones in purple can reach the Pacific Ocean. And similarly, we would also do that with the Atlantic Ocean. We know everything here on the right side can reach the Atlantic Ocean. Everything at the bottom can reach the Atlantic Ocean. And similarly, we do some kind of dra graph traversal starting from each of these positions, right? And see, okay, what, what nodes can reach the Pacific Ocean as well. And at the end, we would want to go through every single position in the grid, and we'd want to find positions like this one that can reach the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean that we marked as being able to reach the Atlantic and Pacific. And then from these ones that can reach both, we would add them to our result and then return the result. So that's kind of the general algorithm of how we're going to do things. The reason this is more efficient, this is going to be big O n times m. We're not going to be revisiting nodes, multi, you know, several times. We're not going to be rerunning a graph traversal. What we're going to be doing is starting at each of these nodes, right? Doing a depth first search, right? So, for example, let's say we started at this one, right? We do a depth first search and then see all the other nodes that can reach the Pacific Ocean, right? You know, let's say we marked these and these, right? And then maybe we do the same thing starting at this one, right? And we'd, you know, go over here, maybe, and then go over here, and then we'd come back here. If we ever got to a cell that we revisited, we would not want to continue our depth first search from a repeated cell, right? So we, we just wouldn't do that. So that's the main idea of this algorithm. But there's one last point I want to make before I start going through the code. And that is, remember how if we're starting at a cell like this one, water can flow from this cell to a cell that has a smaller value, right? Like a cell, a small cell like three, for example, and then it can flow down to a smaller cell like one, and then it can reach the ocean, right? So if we are going starting from a cell and reaching the ocean, we are allowed to go at equal heights, so one can reach one, or we can go in decreasing heights like these ones. But if we're going in the opposite direction, if we're starting at the Atlantic Ocean and going to a cell like one, going to a cell like three, and going to a cell like five, then we're gonna have to do the opposite. We can go to cells of equal heights or cells of increasing heights, right? Do you kind of see why that's the case? Because what we're saying is water is allowed to flow from five to three to one. So therefore, water from the ocean is allowed to go from one to three to five. Because that does mean that five can reach the ocean. So with that being said, the first thing I'm going to do is go through the first row, which is going to be Pacific Ocean values and then I'm going to and from there I'm going to run depth first search to see all the other nodes that can reach the Pacific Ocean and I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom row seeing which nodes can reach the Atlantic Ocean and I'm going to be maintaining those in a set let's call it a visit set it's going to be a hash set so that we don't end up adding duplicates to it so now getting into the code. So the first thing I like to do with these problems is just get the dimensions of the grid. So we're guaranteed that this grid is not going to be empty. So we don't have to you know, worry about that. So let's get the length of heights, which is going to give us the number of rows and then get the number of columns as well. And so I'm going to be having two hash sets, Pacific and Atlantic, maintaining all the positions that can reach the Pacific and Atlantic oceans respectively. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through every single position in the first row. So I'm going to go through every single column in the first row, right? And what's going to be every single position in the first row? From here, it's going to be zero, zero, right? In the first row is zero and column is going to be the column position. 
And so what I want to do on this position is run a DFS, right? So I'm going to run a DFS on this position, right? And so I'm going to pass in a visit set to this DFS function. Since this is the first row, the first row means it's the Pacific Ocean, right? It's not the Atlantic, it's the Pacific. So that's what I'm going to pass in as the visit set, the Pacific Ocean. So I want to visit this position and I want to see all the other positions it can reach. Now, we know that water from the ocean to other cells can only go at equal values or greater values, right? Remember, we reversed the thinking since we're going from the ocean to the cells, we're going to have to do the opposite. So we can go to greater cells. So I want to always pass in a previous height variable to this. So if we're going to visit a cell, I want to make sure that you know, we're allowed to visit that cell. So I'm going to pass in a previous height. So since there is no previous height for this position, I can just give it a default value and I'll just give it the same height as this position because that's going to be allowed. Remember, we're always allowed to visit heights of the exact same height as the previous position. And so while we're at this, right, we're going through every position in the first row. Why not go through every single position in the last row, which tells us the Atlantic Ocean, right? So what's the last row? It's going to be the number of rows minus one and going through every column in that row. And so instead of passing in Pacific, let's pass in Atlantic because the bottom row refers to the Atlantic Ocean. And similarly, we'll pass in the height of this position as the previous height. So we're calling this DFS function, so let's might as well define it up above here now. The first two parameters are going to be the row and column, and the next is going to be the visit set. Now, since we're reusing this function for both Atlantic and Pacific, we'll just give it a generic name like visit. We could be passing in either of these two sets. And the last parameter is the previous height. So if this position has already been visited, meaning if row column is in visit, then we're going to return. We're not going to continue this function. Or if it's out of bounds, we're also not going to return, right? Because remember, we're already going from the ocean, from let's say the Pacific Ocean, and trying to visit all the cells that we can, because that's going to tell us all the cells that can reach the Pacific Ocean. So we're not even trying to reach the ocean right now. We're, we're going from the ocean to all the cells. So if we go out of bounds, then we're going to have to return. So if let's say R is less than zero or C is less than zero, or if R is equal to the number of rows, that means we've gone too large. Or if C is equal to the number of columns, that also means we've gone too large. And the last case where we would want to return is if the height of this position row column is less than the previous height because remember we're only allowed to go to heights of greater height or equal so if the height was too small then we would want to return if we're not returning that means we are finding a new cell so let's go ahead and add it to visit we're visiting this new cell row column and then on all four of its neighbors, we also want to run DFS on all four of those neighbors. And we could do that with a loop, but I'm lazy, so I don't want to write that out. I'm just going to copy and paste this four times. So, so row, column, passing in visit, and passing in the previous height, which is just going to be height at this position, row, column. Let's copy and paste this four times. And so we're going to go through all four of its neighbors. So row plus one is one neighbor, row minus one is a neighbor, column plus one is another neighbor, and column minus one is another neighbor. And that's gonna be the entire DFS function for us. It's gonna be marking all nodes that can visit, that can reach the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean, depending on what we pass in. And so right now we're doing that for the first row and the last row, but we also know the first column is, gon is going to be the Pacific Ocean and the last column is going to be the Atlantic Ocean, so let's do that. So for every row in range of rows, we wanna get every position at the leftmost column and call DFS on it. So for row, we're just gonna pass in the current row, we're gonna go through every single row, and for column, we're gonna pass in zero, right? We know that the first column is zero, and if and the first column can reach the Pacific Ocean, so that's what we're gonna pass in. And for heights, we're just gonna give it the default value of this position. And similarly, let's do the same thing for the last row. Let's do the same thing for the last column. So for columns, instead of zero, let's do columns minus one. And instead of Pacific, let's pass in the Atlantic Ocean because that's 
what the rightmost column refers to, and heights is going to be the same default value. And so we don't have to rewrite the DFS function, right? Because we already wrote it up above here. We're reusing that function. So once these two loops have executed, we will have marked every single position that can reach the Pacific Ocean in here. And we'll have done the same with the Atlantic Ocean. So now after that, let's just go through every single position in the grid, brute forcing it. So every single posi position, every single row, every single column. And for every single position, we want to know if this position, row, column, is in the Pacific Ocean and if row column is in the Atlantic Ocean, then what we want to do is let's first declare a result list. If this position was in both Atlantic and Pacific, we want to go ahead and add it to our result. And we want to add it as a, let's say, as a sub list. And so once we've done that, then we have definitely found out every single position that can reach both Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, and then we can go ahead and return that result. Okay, I had a pretty stupid bug, so sorry about that. So when we're passing in, uh, we're you know we're finding the position of height. So you know we have column because that's what we're at. For row, we should have zero because that's the position that we're starting at. So sorry about that. Let's change this to a zero. And similarly down here, I actually think we have this right. So rows minus one because that matches over here. But down here we have row and column zero. So we want to change column to a zero over here. And over here we do have row, so that matches, but columns minus one is the column value that we wanna pass in. So with those changes, you can see that this solution does work and it is about as efficient as you can get for this problem. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.